Welcome to the official Finnovate podcast with Greg Palmer. In 2007, Finnovate set out to create a dynamic fintech showcase featuring live seven-minute demos. For more than a decade, our global event series has brought together tens of thousands of people from across the fintech spectrum to see cutting-edge technologies. Now you can find out what goes on behind the scenes as key influencers and innovators share the stories that they don't get to tell you from stage. Here's a glimpse of what we have in store for this episode. Whether you're the fintech company or the bank, never talk down to your employees. I think keeping them aware of why you're making changes is really important to getting the pickup that you need. And now your host, Greg Palmer. Welcome to the Finnovate Podcast. This is Greg Palmer. It's a new year, a new decade, in fact, for financial technology. And those of you who've been following Finnovate for a while know that when we turn the year, it's time for us to start looking towards our European show. We've moved our European show to Berlin this year from London, but that European show comes first in the calendar year and is always a really interesting marker for us as we think what the high-level trends are going to be in the coming year. To get people thinking about that show, we're going to start with a couple of conversations from previous Best of Show winners at Finnovate Europe. Today, we have Launchfire, who won at Finnovate Europe 2019 in London, and we're going to talk to them about how they view training and the importance of training as it comes to digital adoption. Let's jump now into the interview with Romeo. Joining me on the podcast today, we have Romeo Mayone, the Director of Business Solutions for Launchfire. I think his mom refers to him as the Director of BS. Romeo, is that true? Uh, 100%. She actually loves to tell her friends that. Perfect. So now you know what kind of a podcast this one's going to be. And Launchfire is an interesting company. They've been on stage at a couple of Finnovate events, actually won Best of Show at Finnovate Europe 2019. I bring that up because we're approaching Finnovate Europe 2020 coming up in Berlin in February. I know that, Romeo, you guys were very successful up there on stage last time. Can you give us just a quick overview of what Launchfire is all about? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us, Greg. So, Lemonade is Launchfire's game-based training solution exclusively built for the financial industry. While it can train on any topic, and and certainly has, the platform is a real focus on digital adoption training. With the platform, you can build your own interactive simulators, role plays, and gamified learning content. And I always like to say it goes well beyond the badges, leaderboards, and levels that kind of haunt the training industry like a ghoul. We try to make it actually fun. Yeah, it's really interesting. And and the platform itself is fun. I think you also demo it very well, which is why you've been able to create that resonance with the audience. But one of the things that I think is really interesting, you know, there are a lot of bottlenecks around fintech integration and adjusting user behavior is probably seen as the biggest one and, and rightfully so. But a lot of people look past this lower hanging fruit of the actual financial industry insiders, the people inside of banks. And I think that their behavior is really what needs to change in many cases in order to spur their customers' behavior to change. So you know, based on what you've seen, how is that group responding to some of the new tech systems that they're being asked to adopt? Yeah, it's a great question. And I really do think frontline bank staff are an underused tool in the, the quest for digital adoption. Frontline staff of banks Uh, While they're across all age demographics, they are primarily millennials, and they're a cool crowd, and they can pick up pretty much any tech you throw at them. But there's two things to keep in mind, and that many employees don't actually bank with the bank that they work for, so don't use the specific tools, and so it's kind of hard for them to recommend them. And the second is that if all you give them is PowerPoint and a quiz, they're not really going to learn how it works. They're going to kind of skip through it. So I think this is a group that's primed to know and understand the products, but the tools that they're given really aren't sufficient for being able to really recommend them in a conversation. Sure. So maybe they even want to know more about processes than they are able to, and they just don't have the access to the tools that would really help them learn it. Yeah, exactly. It's just they're given a PowerPoint and that's not sufficient. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, I know for myself, I'm asked to take training documents and things like that. And like a lot of people, you know, who are good test takers, it's not difficult to kind of guess at the right answer to move through it very quickly. And and typically those are sort of like, oh man, I've got to take another training. (laughs) I have to do this really quickly because I'm being asked to do it. And that's not ultimately what helps you do your best work, you know, and and you compare that with kind of the launch fire system, which is much more around engaging with, with the copy a little bit more and and really learning it and kind of having some fun with it. I think that's, that's going to be more effective for sure. So are there any interesting stories that you can share about how your training pieces have been helpful in driving fintech adoption from inside financial institutions? 
Yes, our, our marquee stat is that users who run through our platform are 91% more likely or almost twice as likely to actually recommend a digital product to a real customer. And I think the reason for that is because we give them a breadth of tools. So if you just do the PowerPoint and click next, like I've done for most training I've taken in the workplace in my life, you don't really understand how stuff works. But when you are given a facsimile of a conversation to run through, when you do an interactive simulator, you actually kind of understand it. Now, one thing that sometimes happened to us is a good problem, but a problem nonetheless is we'll get a call from a big bank saying, people are playing too much, you got to cut down on time. <laughs> so on occasion, there is too much training, but thankfully, we've been able to put guardrails on it to limit it to an appropriate amount of time in a day. But for the people who do use it, are actually recommending products more frequently and getting the job done for digital adoption. So it is helpful in that way for sure. Well, I think this brings up an interesting point that we talked about a little bit before we actually got on the line here. You know, the, using this as almost a, a marketing uh, standpoint, you know, obviously you can throw money at consumers by putting big commercials up and football games and things like that, but really engaging with the front lines of your own branches and the employees who actually are talking to customers on a day in day out basis. Those are the people who really have that trusted relationship where they can talk to someone face to face. And if you make a recommendation for a digital product in that space, it's going to be more effective. Can you talk a little bit about you know how you've seen that dynamic play out and how it's sort of improved things from a marketing standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that to me is really the goal of all digital adoption training is to turn staff into advocates so that they can actually recommend those products and have real confident conversations with customers. And I think about running a, a Super Bowl ad, just the, the millions of dollars that costs, and maybe 10% bank with you, that's a, if you're, you know, JP Morgan, and then maybe 5% of them are on the fence about digital products. But if you look at a branch, these are all people lining up to do an analog transaction that could be done digitally. And if you're not using the advertising you have there, and I say advertising, I mean the frontline staff who are talking to them, that's a huge tool that you're really giving up on to spend you know, zillions on, on TV ads. In my opinion, I think staff are really underutilized as a probably best frontline tool for those marketing initiatives. Yeah, I mean, certainly that's one of those kind of tried and true sales techniques, right? Is making sure that somebody in that moment where they've got that trusted person, your own staff out there advocating for the changes that you as an organization want to make. It's, it's very tried and true. Now let's switch gears a little bit because we've been talking about this from the standpoint of a financial institution looking to do some training. Let's approach it from the standpoint of a financial technology company who knows that they're going to need to change financial institutions' behavior, their employees' behavior in order to be successful and get their own product into some of those organizations. Are there any best practices that you can share for that group? Aside, of course, from just bringing LaunchFire into the equation, that's a cheater answer. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of like asking a toaster how they like their bread, uh, but I'll, I'll avoid the plug for, for this question for sure. But I, I really think when you're dealing with um, a massive organization like a bank that's kind of slow to, to adopt tech, I think particularly North America, I think there's a couple things that you have to keep in mind. The first is whether you're the fintech company or the bank, never talk down to your employees. I think keeping them aware of why you're making changes is really important to getting the pickup that you need. And I think on both sides, you need to really invest in soft skills training. Because if you don't give people the conversational hooks they need to have conversations about digital, I think you're in real trouble. It is a real seismic shift. And I think that's, that's important to recognize. Going digital is not a tiny change in how people operate. It's a massive shift in how people deal with their money. So I really think taking a, a mindful approach to the soft skills that have to accompany that really is important. I absolutely agree with you on that one. Anybody who listens to the podcast or who reads my writing knows I really value communication and sort of speaking simple language. And I think that's one of those things which really gets to the heart of it. You know, we look at in fintech a lot of times, the language that surrounds it can be kind of a gatekeeper. People who aren't inside the club who don't know, you know, it's easy to sort of look down your nose at them and make these judgments. But in order to bring people along, you have to reach out to them with those soft skills. You have to have a message that resonates with them. And to your point, you have to teach them how to craft those messages and give them some of those conversational hooks so that they can go out and employ them themselves. Now we have time for one more piece here and you kind of touched on this. You know, you, you've now seen our European show, you've seen our American shows. I know you're doing business with a bank in Australia as well. You're all over the world. What region has the most stubborn incumbents at, at the risk of kind of kicking the hornet's nest just a little bit? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I'm not going to name names so as much as I'd love to, but I would say the States uh, definitely has two problems at the same time. One, they're way behind uh, the rest of the developed world in digital adoption. And two, they have really stubborn encumbrance that are sometimes on five-year deals that make it really, really challenging to make changes. And when you're trying to do something as fast and important as digital adoption, it sucks to have to wait three years. Yeah, no question about that. I mean, waiting that long for anything, of course, it's going to be a totally different landscape in three years, as we've seen time and time again in the fintech <laughs> arena. Thank you very much for joining us today. I appreciate it as always. And remember, if you haven't had a chance to check out their videos, I would highly recommend that you do that. The videos are available on finnovate.com slash videos. And there's the bell, which I saw coming. The dreaded bell, yes. Dreaded you bell. put all the effort in to practice to avoid the bell, and then you win best of show, and I force you to hear the bell on the podcast anyway. <laughs> I'll get you one way or the other. Yeah, you always get me. <laughs> well, uh, appreciate it. And again, check out their video. Learn more about LaunchFire. And if you're interested in seeing who's going to win best of show at this year's Finnovate Europe, check us out at Finnovate.com. It's always fun chatting with Romeo. He's a very engaging person, and it's not hard to see how he was able to create that connection with the audience and win the Best of Show trophy there in London last year. A couple of interesting pieces to take away from this conversation. I think the most important one is really understanding how vital training is at driving digital adoption and looking at it from the standpoint of not only telling your staff how new technology works, but getting to that deeper level of helping them understand why it matters that it works, what it can do for them, and ultimately putting them in a position where they can turn around and educate your customers on some of the new initiatives that your bank is working on, I think is really important. And it does become a marketing play, as Romeo was talking about. Not a lot of people would think that marketing comes from staff education, but I think it's pretty easy to see how it could. As I said at the beginning, we're going to talk with a couple other best of show winners from Finnovate Europe's gone by. We'll talk to a couple other non Finnovate Europe presenters as well as we look at bringing the podcast into 2020. As always, check out Finnovate.com, your home for information on all of our upcoming Finnovate shows. And don't forget the discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% off of a ticket to Finnovate Europe or any of the other Finnovates you might be considering joining us at. Thanks as always for listening and welcome to 2020. Thanks for joining us on the Finnovate podcast this week. Brought to you by the team behind Finnovate and produced in association with Provoke Media. Make sure you tell your friends about the show, leave us a review on iTunes, SoundCloud, or wherever you listen to our show, and check out our upcoming events at finnovate.com.